Oh yeah. There has been a constant war. A war. Nobody can question my credibility for doing something because I already went through the fire already. Uh, everybody knows it. So, and I mean, most of these people I have out here too, but that's the thing. You don't need to go through that uh, for someone to see that you're brave. Because Todd talks about the people they help him, and Todd talks about the people that try to put him in a trick bag. It's simple. I need to know your response to the Attica Liberation Movement's demands for better treatment. You do not make demands, and you do not circulate petitions inside this facility. IGI is the gang investigators. We're the most violent people in our society. They're the ones that, they're like the intelligence the of the, the police force inside the prisons. They, they investigate other guards, they investigate, yeah, they, they, they got all the power because they investigate even other guards, so, you know, they have that power over everybody, and so, and they're only beholden to certain people, so, you know, a lot of times they just, they, they run amok in prisons, not even one of them, they get so much power, even the wardens won't even say that to them. Many times we find the informant is a junkie, the informant is a drug addict, the informant has provided unreliable information before, or the police made some special deal with the informant to make accusations against our client in return for getting a break on their case. Hey, anybody that wants to see that's interested in what Todd's doing or what's happening to him right now, especially that he's caught up in that fight with the IGI, he put that lawsuit in there. We just got a copy of here, we read it, so, and they can read it for themselves, his lawsuit. What he explains everything in there, what they're doing to him, who did it, he named names and everything in there, so, and he says why it's happened, why it happened to him. Todd's, man, Todd's, that, uh, we're, we're blown away with, because you know, there was all kinds of information, and we know that he, he exposed rats, 10.30 that he got, there was, I mean, it's like, uh, plots of these hours, but he, and he's statement with evidence that, that he got 10.30 forms, and the shit that IGI did to him, I, I, I didn't, we didn't even know, we were just like, man, they targeted him for real, look at, people are not getting killed on the main lines just because nobody would allow that, you think that someone wants to live around some psychopath that's just killing people for no reason, those, these dudes always put themselves in those positions and it's not like one time it's just like over and over that this happens to these dudes and it's usually before they get exposed they'll run to the IGI and then they of course j just like Todd explains in his lawsuit how they use that how they use those informants to push their agenda and manip they manipulate them to do that so they're the ones that are behind all those SMY videos yeah, I mean because it pushes the IGI's agenda they love that shit and, I mean and so they and they and it they, they, don't, they don't want unity, man. That's the main thing, because that's a threat to their job security, like I said in the, my little spill. And so, uh, so of course, they're going to do anything they can to cause the chaos, because that's how they thrive. That's how they're, they're, that's their job security. You know, they, promote that fear in the public. We got the work what they did. How many decades did they tell, us, tell the public we were the worst of the worst up there and they needed to lock us up? Didn't do no crimes. Didn't. Weren't in there for no lie. That's just because we were getting... But yeah, you had all the weirdos on the lines. Do, the child molesters, the rapos, the, you know, all those people on the line. And, you know, that is what it is. But yet we're locked up in a thing and they're saying we're the worst of the worst. But yet when we get out decades later, there's a 95% reduction in violence in the three years we've been out. Four years now. But, see, but, but you, people don't promote that. It's not being promoted. They, that, that's swept under the rug. You, you don't, they don't want to, they don't want to, they don't want to put that out there because that just flies in the face of all the reliant propaganda over all those years. They came to me one day in my cell and before I went up to talk about it, said, you know, we've ran an investigation on you, determined you're a member of the Aryan Brotherhood. And uh, they validated me with an indeterminate shoe program, which means that I had to stay the rest of my life in the shoe until uh, I died because I had 65 years of life and I was like well how did you determine that I was a validated gay member and they, and they said through these competition from what information that they didn't have a right to uh, um, uh, reveal who, who it actually was so I could defend myself or dispute whatever uh, they were saying about me so this went on some informant or somebody that debriefed uh, some other prisoner you know most likely owed money or uh, you know, for heroin deaths or drug deaths and or this you know this some kind of dirty thing in prison and they go check in uh, to be protected and they tell them whatever they you know tell the police whatever they want them in the, in the guard so anyway i was validated as an area brotherhood member and i went up to pelican bay and there i stayed uh 
uh, till 2006 in the long corner, which was with other prisoners, you know, other general uh, general population inmates that were in the shoe that had determined shoe programs for killings and stabbings that were considered to be uh, gang uh, connected. So, but then they in 2006 started a short corridor, and some call it the gang corridor, short corridor with four cell blocks in it. And they open that up for just validated members and isolate us even further from the other prisoners in the shoe. I walk this tier, son. There's nothing wrong here. Nobody's got a legitimate bitch unless I say so. Police talk is the exercise of the sovereign right oh, yeah, of here's a an inmate trying to jerk a new officer around, that's all. And the no, 31! IGI systematically statewide were getting these, these debriefers for whatever reason why they weren't debriefing the shoe or, you know, owe money for drugs, just like I said, or, you know, that people, they got shady crimes that they're being found out, so they went and ran to the IGI. And by law, they have to record their debriefing. Then, you know, whatever criminal activity, because you could, when the debriefers got to tell the guards all their criminal activity, ever, from the very beginning, they're like, just, just debrief their criminal history, you know, name them or give up all the names they know, whatever they know, any other people committing crimes. Well, what happened was, so they had these little for years, they've been doing this for, you know, decades, and now that we got this, ad, the, the, the Astro Settlement, no one ever looked, and it, it explains this in the, in the document, that for all these decades, they were just locking us up in the shoe for decades at a time, just on those 10 30s. And now what a 10 30 form, confidential form is, once it debriefs, and then the IGI writes a report with no oversight, no one else checks that report. So he writes his report, and that report goes in your, your files. Now I don't know, I guess they store, they, they were storing the um, actual recordings of the debriefers in Sacramento and their computers. Well, in 2017, the attorneys told the California Department of Corrections once they believed that they were lying and fabricating shit, they filed in court that they asked the judge to tell CDC to, that, to, to, to hold all the, the debrief and recordings because they now they want to verify all this shit. So what they did was, the CDC, you know what they did? They destroyed all the tapes. And they busted them. They, 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 they got evidence that they destroyed all these tapes. Because what happened was, and it was statewide, this is one, and it wasn't a prison, this was hundreds of IGI, what they were doing were lying. Whoever wanted, they wanted to target, they, they said to debriefers, so, okay, say someone debriefed, they didn't mention my name, but they're like, but they're after me. So they said, yeah, Gandell was running drugs for the fame in the Northern Pens, and they, they fabricated all that shit. So what they did was, what they had the, but they had the reports that are in your, your, a confidential file. So they got these reports. So then they told uh, the um, California Department of Corrections that now that they got people's C files, confidential files, and they had those reports by these IGI, they said they wanted to see if the, it was valid what they were saying in the report compared to the actual dude who was telling us recording, and they destroyed all the tapes. Literally destroy, I mean, against, and it's, that's against the law. They destroyed all the tapes. So, but somehow they got a hold of six tapes on six different incidents in different prisons with different IGI, and every single one was a lie. That they fabricated shit, omitted shit, and they actually added it through other people when they were completely, it was completely fabricated. Was it, they, all six of them, six or six, wasn't what the guy was saying. And so, and this is just, this is, this is what they've been doing for decades now. That's what I'm trying, that's what I was trying to put out. But see, I don't want people to go to the court. This is all, this is all being exposed in a court, but it's all low key now. And so, you know, they, so unless people get on the court or on the website, um, the, the CDC's not going to advertise that. You know what I'm saying? They the top two in the snitch gang, really, bro. I used to listen to Snitch Nine before I get pumped up and go in that little investigation room and start snitching, bro. I tell that story clear here after you listen to him, boy. He good. He good. They're all, they're, they've been manufacturing crimes, and they've been actually manipulating the people for decades to fill up these shoes on false allegations that are protecting the community just to dig the, dig the systems out of their tax paying money. Because these ultra, ultra lock up prisons are like twice as much to run than a regular prison. So they had a vested interest in getting more money for the budget and it ever expanded, and we need more prisons. 
and they just and then they infiltrated the political aspect where they're just you lock people up in prison. That's all your job is. You keep people for who are sentenced by the judges in prison. That's all your job is. But they, they got that guard unit that grew so big, and then they started manipulating the politicians to put all these tougher crimes that to lock more people up. It was just like, I like a scam. And I'm like, this shit, it's getting exposed in the court now. And we're going to see, we're, we're going to see what actually happens if people are still responsible for this shit, doing this criminal activity for decades, and ripping the taxpayers off. Those people are the real, real organized crime family. Uh, they're the ones that they're the ones that are orchestrating all that shit, and now they're getting exposed. They're, they're getting dug out from behind this shit. So that's why I wanted the people to see this this actual case that was filed, this actual document that was filed. Oh uh, yeah, they got them, man. So we're, we're gonna see what happens behind all this. Okay, this is the United States. This was filed in the United States District Court, Northern District of California, Eureka Division. This is the Todd Astrosello case number. 409-CV-05796-CW-2023-0001. And in parentheses, RMI. And this is, listen, this is the document that was document 1411, filed 121520. What's going on in the, in the prisons. And they're how they are fabricating crimes and what they're doing is whoever they target, whoever they don't like, just like how they got us on this case and brought us here because we're trying to bring people together. People really don't believe shit like that happens, but it really is. And what the, and this what these documents that just got filed last month in the North District Court actually put out there that for decades that IGI, no one ever questioned their word. When they made these recordings One minute remaining made these reports, when people went to the 115 hearing after they got locked up, they just used the 1030 chrono. And all that is, is that confidential information was used saying that you did this. It has, it has a, and so that's what the people at the 115 hearings were going on. They weren't even looking at it. no further than that. And they were finding guilty, people guilty and putting them in to shoot for decades behind that. And so now what they're doing now is they're finding out those 1030 forms were fabricated. And so, and, and did that. so I mean, that's the main thing. And, it, and they were using the same things for parole hearings, and they were denying people parole. Well, the parole board member didn't even look past in 1030s. And you, you cannot question a confidential informant. You, could, you couldn't even fight at these alle lying allegations against you. You see how the setup was? You couldn't even, you can't, it was confidential. So you, you would get those 1030s dropped on you, there's, that's it. Once they got, once the lawyers got onto that, the California Public Pressure destroyed all the tapes. Because this is an ongoing settlement that, they're, that the coalition attorneys are fighting in court uh, for certain things that, the, the scandalous things that IGI and them are doing since we got out. They're trying to implement different shit and thwart things and um, they're not giving people programs and like they're supposed to do. That it was all part of rehabilitation, all that. But these people are, are they're, 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 that's why they were forcing all those documents and for cooperate. That's it, not that us. But Judge Illman put a, had an investigation of, of a court monitor check all this shit out, and he found that the IGI were lying that they had informants, but the, the, and they were cooperated. They gave cooperating evidence on certain things, and, and when, when they went to investigate that statewide, and this is not just only one person, this they said it was a systematic, widespread, statewide thing from IGI that they were, and they were doing that for decades, but no one ever checked, they just took their word before it. We got confidential from it, that was all you needed. Their word was gold. You just, you just set the stage, because all this is coming out after they indicted us, you know what I'm saying? So they're like, oh shit, you know the federal prosecutor's like, man, all these liars, that can, my own people, who the, you know, the, the federal government is saying is doing all this shit now, they're like, we're gonna have to go to trial with all these liars, you know, for the prison? It's all make-believe shit? I believe it's gonna be very interesting to see what happens. Also, you have this massive drug trafficking organization, shut the hell up, man. Well, we're, we're broke, what are you talking about? I'm just like, you can't make this shit up. I mean, you, you, you can't make, you just, I, I, we cut this case right on the verge of this, all this getting exposed and it just like, you, you set the stage. It, it just like, they're like, they're like they're a cop, cop with their pants down now. They're like, oh shit, what do we do now? All this shit came out after the indictment, allegedly the indictment. It's gonna be very interesting, man.
to see what happens. But uh, I hope that we could just keep pushing the envelope, man, and show what they've been doing to people for decades, man. It's lying on people, man. It's exact. you taking 10 cents and adding 90 to it, man. He explains in his law, so even if people don't want to read it, he explains in there articulately how IGI set him up and how they did their, like, their sting operation, how they targeted him, and what the, and by, and by, Using their informants that you know that actually before they went S Y they were using their undercover informants to spread bullshit information to actually put Todd's life in jeopardy. And then because once they know that they put all that bunky ass information out, and then they secretly were listening on people, other people, and so of course when they were like, hey man, let's just sign a, a dropout, uh, the debriefing. And they put that out there to the other prisoners and they get the other prisoners to talk about. And then they generate that information. Then they say they have credible information that Todd's life's in danger. But they're the ones that fabricated the whole thing in the beginning. And he explains it word for word in, the, in his lawsuit now. So uh, I hope people do download it and read it. And, and, and so, you know, before people make ignorant comments when they don't really don't know what's going on. Hey, my name's Chantel and I'm addicted to snitching. Oh, Chantel? He sits on everybody, bro. And once they stitched on me. Please, you got that. You're good kids. Stay in school and you're good to go. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on right quick, Sean, bro. Ain't you on probation? And you got guns and weed on you right now. Guns and weed. Guns and weed. Black boy, get up. Go tell, go tell on niggas. Yeah, Sean. Sean, tell on niggas. People, they have no clue. You're just, you're, they're just promoting what the, they're promoting IGI. That, and all those people that are on the IGI, trust me, those are IGI cops that, that and we got we got word that they actually scan those and they, they got people surfing those websites and to, to put their spin their propaganda. What concerns me is not the way things are, but the way people think things are. Look, the people that are putting out videos or are getting on you know, Facebook or, or YouTube are putting out videos. Like a bunch of bunch of prisoners did that, you know, that freeze frame stuff down there in one of the prisons today. As soon as they seen that on the on the uh, there was all the blacks, whites, Mexicans out on the day room and say they rushed that whole prison and took all the cell phones, like got two hundred and fifty cell phones out there and they were just playing around. But what I'm saying is if they don't want you to have a phone and they see that you're on social media, then they're gonna come get that unless you're putting out videos supporting their position and you're causing chaos and you're spreading that that hate. And, and how how someone from a S and White yard that's in protective custody being brave or anything. You know, they should, how come they're not doing that from the main line? It's because they're running and hiding and then now they're working for the IGI. That's allowing them to do that. It's just like the, it's just like the informants on the street, the, the cops that, if the, if the dudes, like these, dudes, these informants that were running around with the ATF on the street where how they got these indictments, these dudes are using drugs, they're criminals still. They don't stop being criminals, but yet they turn a blind eye to their criminality because they're giving up other people, so they allow that to happen. And they arrest, you know, they arrest the people that ain't participate in their program, their money scam. Now you people are turning into a problem again, my friend. Well, how are you going to deal with the problem, Mr. Superintendent? Keep us on the move inside the system? Should you continue with your subversive and disruptive activities, you will be subject to immediate transfer to another prison. The effect will not be unlike that of having your nuts caught in a revolving door. So look at this. If they had someone that had a, uh, like, like when I was in the, uh, and folks, I got, the, they came and rushed my cell and bust me with 11. They didn't, so they didn't want me having a, a, a cell phone. One of the representatives for the hunger strike that um, the courts overturned indefinite shoe programs. One of the authors of It Hostility. So, you know, anything they got wind of it, they came out. So, so don't, but those things that you let them have that and facilitate that so they can, so that what they see is if there's something positive for them, they don't, they won't mess with those people. But if there's something that's against their agenda, you know, they'll make sure they'll go get that phone from them. So it's just, it's all a, it's all a scam, man. You know who scares me the most, Mr. Oswald? It's not these guys. I can live with them. I got no problem here. It's those gorillas up there! I want to explain to the people who might not know what S and Y stands for. That acronym stands for Special Needs Yard. A politically correct way of saying protective custody. Snitch. These are the prisoners, for one reason or another, can't walk at Red River Main Line. Either they have a conviction for some type of sex crime, or they need protection because they have cured a large debt 
using drugs that they ultimately knew they couldn't pay. It took off before the extent of it came to the surface. Of course, they don't tell the IGI that. They fabricate something to justify what they're doing. And they end up doing IGI's bidding. Trust me, these prisoners haven't had a sudden shift in nobleness. They're running now. So they start promoting IGI's agenda because IGI tells them if they don't help them, they're going to throw them back to the wolves on the main line. So those people so ready to jump on the SNY bandwagon and start insulting people just on an SNY's word, Todd Astor's lawsuit. It lays out page after page how IGI and IGI's prisoner collaborators tried to cross him up. This is their long-standing practice to target who they consider a threat to their job security. Todd named names of the IGI collaborators. His lawsuit contains eye-opening information, like since all shoe prisoners were released from the shoe, Todd states to CDCR statistics, there's been a 95% reduction of violence in all the prisons statewide. That's why we're all targeted, because IGI thrives on chaos. They don't want unity, they need villains. And this can all be verified, so without throwing out more negativity, in pushing IGI's agenda, people need to truly listen to our message of unity. SNY prisoners are on that page because they already sold themselves to the puppet masters, just like those people insulting Frank Clement. In Todd's lawsuit, he thanks Frank for trying to help him, as well as Danny Truxell and I. Knowledge is power, and no dark energy can fade us, no matter how many SNY prisoners they throw at us. And the people can't see me, but I'm dropping the mic. So don't believe anything else. Um, you you don't have to do anything out of the ordinary for. Um, you to keep your honor and uh, integrity, just like you're here. Nothing changed with me since 1970s, 1980s, to the 90s until uh, now. Uh, I've never compromised my principles or integrity on the things that I believe. And, uh, uh, you know, and the bottom line is, uh, when you get uh, enough jurors behind you and you see the truth, you know, you don't really care what... Um, Lost people think of, you know, what, what that are closed minded or uh, don't want to listen to somebody else because it goes against all the things they already been manipulated by uh, or through uh, whatever means. But um, we're all out here together now and we all get along and things changed and it could be the same way on the streets. Uh, you got a problem just like we had in the end of the hostilities that one thing with if you got a problem with somebody, you should deal with that yourself. Um, you and that other man work that out, or woman, whoever it may be, and then you two should work out. Don't run down the street and go get your friends and, um, you know, try to drag everybody into it, you know, and then other people get into it, and then the race, you know, and then the police run. You know, that's the manipulation. We demand better food. We demand better medical facilities. We demand an end to censorship of inmate attorney correspondence. We demand the right to worship how we please. We demand a rehab system that works. We demand Spanish-speaking officers for our Latino brothers. Latino brothers. My staff spends half their time keeping you and the Puerto Ricans from killing each other. <laughs> our solidarity scares you chain them to the flow, motherfuckers, don't it? You like us at each other's throats, makes us easier to control. Is that it for today? You got anything else? Anything new? You're running out of time, Mr. Superintendent.